Hello everybody in PD 415. We're going to go ahead and look at your syllabus um, and see that on 12.3 I have pushed up your individualized action plan. It was originally due on uh, the 11th of November or the 19th of November but I pushed it up to December 3rd. So if you go to your modules you will see a lab overview which explains how you're getting your grade and originally we had that individualized action plan due the 11th but like I said we're going to move that up to the third okay as far as your teaching goes next week or the following week you'll be planning your lesson plan number one so if you're in the gym you'll be using this lesson plan and if you're in the pool you'll be using this lesson plan so depending on your lab day um, you'll be able to create a lesson plan by uh, using one of these templates. And if you are in the gym, you can look at the Adaptive Physical Education Guide for Serving, serving Students with Disabilities, or we also have our swim levels. Uh, we have domains of learning, which are going to help with your cognitive, affective, and psychomotor domains when you're creating student learning outcomes uh, for both your individualized action plan and your lesson plan. Okay, and then some grade level outcomes for K through 12 physical education. So if you have the book and you purchase the book for class, you really don't need this teaching toolkit. The teaching toolkit is to serve people that um, either couldn't afford the book, or didn't get the book, um, or may um, need a little bit more uh, input. So if we look at the gym template, what you'll do is you'll download it, open it up, and then you're going to start filling it in. So everyone's lesson plan might be a little bit different. If you want, um, let's just say you're with more than one mentor, you can make this lesson plan together as a group of two or three. So if you're, if there's three mentors and three mentees and you want to create a lesson plan together, that's totally fine. Your section number, uh, the date that you're implementing the lesson plan, the equipment that you're going to get out, uh, a list of the equipment. It could be cones, that could be jerseys, it could be pennies. Um, you know what we have in the equipment room. Uh, we have anything from yoga mats to mat, uh, fitness mats to dumbbells, barbells. We have, uh, you name it, we probably have a soccer ball, volleyball, beach ball hockey sticks, hockey ball, lacrosse sticks, I mean we have it all, we have footballs. So picking out your equipment, uh, what type of environment, obviously if it's in the gym or pool, uh, maybe you need an isolated environment, uh, maybe you need uh, extra space, so you need to kind of detail that here. The instruction, so what type of instruction are you using? So if you look at the book that I um, had you buy, uh, for the gym aspect, so if you bought the um, the gym, the school book that we we're hoping that you'd buy, um, it is called. Uh, let's see here. I don't have it on me right now, but it goes over the instruction environment, equipment, and rules pretty thoroughly. So if we go here. kind of give you an example of what I'm looking for as far as the equipment goes. Alright. So <clears throat> we have some different examples of how you can list the equipment, the rules, the environment out. So all you'd have to do right now is just pause the screen and you could look at some of these examples. I'm going to scroll it down. This is a task progression of the parachute. Um, different placement options individuals with disabilities have. So some individuals have are fully included with no adaptation, support, or IEP, are higher functioning individuals. And then you might have individuals that um, have 
you know, more care, so more, more individuals helping them out. You have different types of equipment characteristics, um, whether it's the weight, size, shape, height, speed, distance, sound, color, trajectory, direction, surface, length, or resiliency. They can all be manipulated. Um, so obviously color is important, size is important, um, speed is important, so you wouldn't want to just throw a ball at somebody really fast. Um, continuing teaching styles. So these are the different types of teaching styles that you might implement. So when it says instruction, what you can put in there is what type of instructional style do you think that you need to uh, use or utilize? So obviously self-teaching would be the highest level and then command would be the lowest level. So if they need a command approach and that's how they learn, you use the command approach. Some of you will be using inclusion, some of you will be doing reciprocal. Um, so kind of go through there and look at what type of instructional style uh, you want to use. So here's some different adapted equipment. Uh, scarves, poly spots, scooters, exercise ball, basketball, yarn ball, parachute, noodles, medicine ball, battle rope, dumbbells, resistant band, hockey sticks, bean bags, and some assessments. Here's some pictures of modified equipment. Notice that I have um, for individuals um, who uh, are looking to get more repetitions, I like to suspend the ball from string. Um, notice that I use balloons for volleyball. We have steppers. Um, notice that there's a, lots of cones and an exercise ball out here. Um, this is a basketball skill. This looks like a basket, a medicine ball skill, a medicine ball skill. Uh, notice that this individual I individual utilize a wheelchair but he uses the battle ropes or resistant bands uh, for many different activities. Notice that they put the hula hoops on the wall here for targeting for tennis. Uh, here's a soft yarn ball on top of a tennis racket. We have you know individuals working together. Looks like some yoga here. That looks like um, some hopping on the poly spots. Looks like a square drill where they're uh, running around or sliding around the square. It looks like they're using the bean bags here, the scooters here. So these pictures are really to give you a, um, a good idea of kind of like what what could you plan or what could you do using the scooters or using the exercise ball or using the hula hoops. You can use the hula hoops for um, you know throwing stuff into. You can use the poly spots for you, with the rackets. You can use the balloons with the rackets. Um, so just try to give you as many um, different um, ideas as possible and so you know at the start of class you can have a rubric where you know um, you don't have to do this but this is just sample rubrics of like what to look like what to look for during a start what to look for during a warm-up what to look for during speed of play okay um, other than that some swimming um, different equipment, rules, environment, and instructions. So if you're teaching a lesson plan in the pool, you might want to just pause the screen right now and kind of look at the different stuff that you could use here. Also, um, for distance swimming, um, here would be the progression. So you would pause this and say, oh, okay, student swims 350 yards. That's the task with appropriate form. And then they start out with student swims 50 yards with any stroke, stopping when necessary, with or without flotation device, and that goes all the way to that task, which was 350 yards. Here's different ways to modify bowling, basketball, golf, soccer, softball, volleyball, and tennis. So again, you can pause the screen and you can use some of these ideas in your lesson plan for sports. Um, these are some disability awareness, um, kind of like uh, some ideas of what to do on day one, day two, stations you could have if you utilize a wheelchair, um, you know, day three, what you could do for your program. Um, so this is just steps on how to create a program. So hopefully you got some good information about, you know, what the plan how to plan, what equipment to use, what it means to 
what the environment means, what the instruction means. So what type of, um, you know, what are you going to take from this and implement it in your lesson plan and start filling it out. What you'll do is you'll activity with a narrative. So what you'll do, what that means is, let's just say um, your activity, oh, we'll go back here first. So psychomotor objectives, uh, psychomotor objective could be to um, perform, you know, and this could be related to your warm up. This could be related to your fitness. Really just give me three objectives that you want to get done. So let's just say, uh, objective is to be able to um, run or walk, jog, or or run continuously for let's just say five minutes around the volleyball court. And the reason why I wrote volleyball court is because you can measure the volleyball court and then you can. Um, actually measure you know how long they were able to run for five minutes so that would be the reason why I would put volleyball court I would just say continuously run for five minutes so now I can figure out what the dimensions are of a volleyball court and figure out how many laps they did and then and be able to count that each week okay another one might be to um, <coughs> throw a football using correct form at a target uh, 10 yards away suspended in the air five feet okay so maybe you're putting a hula hoop up on the wall and all you want them to do is throw a football using correct form at a target 10 yards away uh, using the suspended something suspended in the air okay um, and you might go for let's just say in the air five feet uh, say you're shooting for four out of ten times okay so that's what you would put for that so you might go one and if the indentations make things worse you don't have to you could do a bullet point but I'm just trying to give you examples here okay and three might be to perform a full squat with hips back chest up knees and toes slightly pointed out okay and then your cognitive objective might be to be able to remember my name um, it could be uh, remember the cues to the um, squat form okay it could be um, understand the uh, benefits of cardio could be um, is able to uh, tell me how to grip a football so what do they th have to think about okay and then for social objectives it could be um, to cooperate with other mentees and mentors um, to share equipment um, with others during the lesson so it could be um, to let's just say I'm trying to think off the spot now so be able to communicate their feelings when asked Okay, um, so just depending on your mentee. So this one's hard to just, you know, think of, make one up because I'm trying to think of, you know, the actual student. So let's just say the individual um, isn't able to have a back and forth conversation and you're looking at the uh, effective objectives like, well, I, what would I write here? It might be to react um, to a, 
to us to a stimulus um, in less than 30 seconds so being able to respond to you in less than 30 seconds so some of our mentees if you go to give them a high five they might not reach out so that objective would be to react in less than 30 seconds so it could be eye to eye gaze it could be um, it could be any type of verbal communication whether it's um, them laughing or them making a sound that sound it means that they're maybe aware that you're communicating with them so anything that talks about social skills communication and um, social reciprocity we talked about what that means which is pretty much that they're able to have back and forth communication what type of communication what type of social skills do you want them to have for your lesson as far as your intro and warm-up we kind of went over this in lab um, so you're gonna you're gonna the narrative is what how are you gonna explain this to them so everyone should be explaining the games and the process in their own language so you might say to your mentee we are hello you know it might be a dialogue you could tell maybe you're gonna t tell me how you're gonna in introduce them or introduce yourself or how are you gonna introduce the the class um, how are you gonna introduce the lesson it might be could be um, first I will uh, show my show let's just say Eric a video of um, a football player uh, um, throwing a touchdown pass then I will talk about how that football player has to be able to run in order to play the game then I will tell Eric that we are going to warm up like a football player before a game when the music starts or when the timer starts we will begin to walk around the court for five minutes after five minutes I will cue Eric to begin jogging or it could be sliding it could be skipping it could be you know whatever you're trying to warm up and then you'll t take a picture of you know maybe it's a picture of someone walking or maybe it's a symbol of somebody walking or maybe it's a uh, a football player walking with a football you know so whatever you'd like and make sure that it it takes in account that full 10 minutes okay so don't plan a um, I'm gonna run down to the cone and back it takes 30 seconds and then that's all you have so uh, if you add in more you can add in more pictures um, so range of motion and balance um, I want a narrative so during this time we will um, find a wall and use the wall to perform some calf stretches and we will perform calf uh, stretches using the wall for one minute okay and that's one minute okay and you have 10 minutes there so then you might say, all right, after this, we will um, practice balancing on one foot for uh, one, uh, 30 seconds on each foot. Then, and so you're pretty much outlining in the narrative. And then here you would put the picture. So let's just say you're looking for balance, okay? And you're going to have to go to insert pictures. Okay, you might, uh, let's see, pictures. Let's see if we 
can get online features. Online features, okay. So I'm gonna look for balancing. Okay, I might put that in there, because that looks funny. Okay, it's a symbol, right? Uh, it doesn't have to be exactly what they're doing. Um, so if they're balancing there, and let's just say you want to find a calf stretch. I'm not sure it'll even be in here. What, did, what is a calf? It's three different muscles. You call it your tricep serrae. It's your gastrocnemius, soleus, and Achilles. Okay, so that's what you would put in there. All right, and then you're going to add in, you know, so that's only two minutes. You need to have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten minutes there. So that means you might have ten pictures. Okay, so these lesson plans might start expanding. Okay, fitness exercise. Okay, uh, during this time, we will um, get a mat. Uh, let's just say a thick mat. Okay. Um, your health closure um, and then any modifications and any assessments or rubrics that you're gonna have so if it is a rubric it'll be you know let's just say it's the breakdown of a throw and you're gonna tell me what you're looking for if it's assessment you know what are you assessing what are you trying to measure that day and if you do have something that you're measuring this is where you would put that okay so this is kind of like a quick overview of the lesson plan we've gone over this primarily in class but I kind of want you to kind of see what I'm looking for as far as the narrative goes and then as far as adding in the pictures and the columns okay so your your lesson plan could be four pages uh, could be two pages all right for the pool uh, very similar same same type of lesson plan um, but obviously different sequence um, same thing with the objectives warm-up um, lap swimming pictures um, in, in your boxes okay um, so if you have any questions please email me this is your lesson plan video help prepare you for getting that done in the next couple weeks so if you have any questions please email me and I'll talk to you soon